Hello Sofa Squad and welcome back to the sofa. This is Roscoe, my name's Paul, and that's my sofa. Now today we are going to be entering the final chapter of the Loin Fires. Y'all, we've made it through this almost, so we just gotta make it this last part. Now I have, I did a little sneak peek, I'm not gonna lie, and uh, this this is tawdry. There probably will be some deleted words. Uh, yeah, it's going to get interesting. So, if this is your first time watching this, I've been reading this. This is the third part because I can only take so much of this dumpster fire at a time. And so, go check out the other first two parts. I'll put them in the description. Uh, but we are reading the cringeworthy text message romance novel from Chad Daybell to Lori Daybell. It is horrifying, as you can imagine. But before we jump into it, if you want to hear me talk about scary movies and all things horror films, check out my other channel, Earth Slice, Earth Spice, and A Dice Movie Reviews. I do like unboxings of my horror uh, subscription box. I talk about movies, uh, upcoming things, whatever, over there. So it's free. It's fun. Check it out. If you want to hear uh, more personal story times of, from me, uh, me talking about Florida Man headlines, all that kind of fun stuff, consider joining uh, the channel membership or Patreon. It also helps support the channel. And last but not least, Roscoe and I thank you for being here on the sofa. Thank you so much for all the support, the commenting, the liking, all that stuff. I really appreciate it. Uh, I, this channel would not be here without you and we greatly appreciate the community that has been built here. Thank you so much. Now let's go ahead and get to reading. Now again, the way I'm doing this is I have my computer set up over here, so I'm reading, so just, you know, don't mind me looking away from the screen a little bit. By the time the conference arrived, James and Alina had become very close to their phone conversations, but he desperately needed to see her again. She agreed to pick him up at the airport and take him to his trashy hotel. He was extremely nervous, worried that the spark they had felt earlier might light his loins on fire. I'm just joking, it didn't say that part. If you haven't watched me read these before, I must warn you, I do have to add my little quips in there because I just feel that it needed it. She agreed to pick him up at the airport and take him to his hotel. He was extremely nervous, worried that the spark they had felt earlier might not be there. But, she, but as she arrived at the airport and he opened the car door, his heart nearly burst at the sight of her smile. She was stunningly gorgeous, and as they gripped each other's hands, the electricity was tangible. The love between them was powerful and real. The hotel was only a short distance away, and he invited her into the room. They were soon standing alone in the room, and he put his arm around her and looked her into her gorgeous blue eyes. They hungered for each other, and he leaned forward and fulfilled a promise he had made to her a few days earlier. He gently kissed her tender lips, and the same heavenly electricity filled his entire body. The passionate magic they had felt many centuries earlier came surging, flowing back powerfully. James moved to the couch and Alina stra oh my god. Ooh, y'all, this is getting to oh my god. And Alina straddled him effortlessly. Well, pff, I'm sure that was true for Lori too. Um, <laughs> okay, anyways. So James moved to the couch and Alina straddled him effortlessly as if they had done this thousands of times before. Oh my god. Uh, Y'all, this part, I, I'm, I'm embarrassed to look at the camera. Okay, I'm just going to be like this. Okay. She fit perfectly on him, and they pressed their loins. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, this is no. No. I, no. I just don't know what else this, this is bad. Roscoe's scared. It's okay, buddy. It's okay. It's okay, Lassie. What happened there, Lassie? Okay. Whew. Okay. Here we go. Okay. They pressed their loins tightly against each other. The feeling was exquisite, and they both smiled and moaned at the sensations passing between them. They were still fully clothed, but the intensity of the intimacy was undeniable. I love how they try and save Faye, or Chad tries to save, like, we were still fully close. She had, like, 20 layers on. You know what I'm saying? Where he's, like, still trying to, like, keep it, you know, like, PG for whatever, you know, code they're trying to live up to or whatever. 
that was a rough start. Okay, I'm glad I finished the other chapter where I did and start off with this one because I just, I want to be able to. Okay. James felt the powerful desire to bless Elena that <laughs> No. No. <sighs> no. Y'all, this is, I don't know if I can make it through here, squad. This is bad. Okay, <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> Look at those pretty lips, Lord mercy, they need a blessing. Okay. So he felt the need to bless Elena at that time. As they stayed in that favorite position, he moved his hands to her head and began to cleanse and purify each part of her body. He could feel the pains and troubles she had endured throughout her life, being removed from her soul and being taken outside and destroyed. James's hands worked their way down her body and lingered briefly on her beautiful breast. She truly had the body of a goddess and he was experiencing an indescribable mix of physical and spiritual ecstasy. He soon concluded the cleansing of her body from head to toe, then filled her body with a balm of light and love. <laughs> I cannot. Y'all, it sounds like a little cat or something. I mean, all I kept imagining this was like one of my cats. A damn little sturble or something. Oh my god. This is bad. This is deep-rooted issues, y'all. Okay. Deep-rooted issues. Okay. Oh my god. Let me get... Please all. Oh my god. I cannot. Okay. Here we go. James could see the happiness in her eyes, and instinctively, their mouths came together again. The fire was burning strongly within them both, and as their kissing grew more intense, he gently said, I love you, Elena. Those words sparked a frenzy within them, their tongues effortlessly entwined, their hips gyrated in a smooth, erotic rhythm. Two lovers long separated, were finally united in heavenly bliss. After a few minutes of excitement, pleasure, and fun on the couch, James and Elena both felt compelled to change into more comfortable clothing. James out in some athletic shorts and a blue shirt, and Elena put on a stunning black top and tight leggings. The top revealed just enough, not too much, and James was overjoyed at the sight. Oh my. God, y'all, this is, I mean, this is bad. Oh my God, I cannot, I mean, I am like, I'm embarrassed. Okay, James took her in his arms and they smiled at each other. The vibration in the room was intense and their hearts reached out to each other in glorious reunion. James gently touched the sides of Elena's breast and he was in ecstasy. She stood on her tiptoes and gave him a sensual kiss that sent electricity through his body. They moved toward the bed and were quickly entwined around each other. She was so beautiful, loving, and enchanting that James could hardly breathe. They were both aroused, but knew there were limitations on what could occur that night. But they had kissed for nearly an hour and pressed against each other. Toward the end of the evening, Elena lay, laid on her stomach at the end of the bed, and James caressed her fabulous body. He grasped her perfect bottom with both hands, and she expressed how much she loved it. She soon sat up and straddled him again as they passionately kissed farewell. They knew they would see each other again in the morning, but the separation seemed too long. But they knew that the long wait to find their eternal match had come to an end. And James was overjoyed beyond description. James and Elena had agreed to visit the temple the following morning. She returned to the hotel room and after additional romance on the couch, they calmed their nerves enough to give each other a blessing. Are we sure blessing means what we think it means? I mean, I feel like it's interchangeable at this point. Maybe that's part of it. Maybe if we think in these terms, remember how like when Melanie called me in the middle of the night for a blessing? 
As James placed his hands on her head, he connected with Elena's true eternal self. He knew he was in the presence of an exalted goddess who had returned to Earth to perform a special mission. This mission included being with him, and they would progress together as translated beings. The full plan wasn't yet completely clear to him, but the immense power radiating from her confirmed his belief that she was among the greatest women in the universe. She then gave him a tremendous blessing that helped him realize how much she truly loved him and wanted to be with him forever. I'm, I'm done. Blessing does not mean what we blessing. It does not mean that. We need to review this entire case with a whole new lens on it because this is just absolute horrifying rubbish. Okay, he was deeply humbled that such an incredible woman regarded him so highly. I mean, you know, the standards are real low here, okay? His heart burned as she blessed him over and over, up and down, left and right. I was joking, I was turning the page, and I just had to ad-lib for a second. Um, his heart burned as she was blessed him, and he had glimpses come to his mind of not only their life in Jerusalem, but even as a couple on the, a previous earth, he knew that he had been eternal companions for eons, and that their love was beyond celestial. Again, this is where I'm like, this is so creepy. Like, how intertwined, like, religion is with, you know, SEX stuff. I'm just like, I mean, who does that? Who, I mean, this is so gross. They embraced following those dirty little blessings. And the emotions they felt were a mixture of eternal bliss and absolute shame. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. It is a shit, but God knows it should have. Okay. It should have. Okay. They <laughs> Okay, here we go. Let's get serious. Let's pull it together. Let's pull it together. We've got to get through this. Okay, they embraced following the blessings and the emotions that they felt were a mixture of eternal bliss and celestial, maybe it's supposed to be celestial desire. The sexual chemistry was undeniable, but the spiritual unity was a glorious bonus for them both. They had only known each other for three weeks, but two lonely, misunderstood souls had finally found their best friend and they could trust that they could trust and confide in. I mean the level I mean these are people that have children and spouses and all that kind of stuff, and they you would think they I mean just had led these horrifyingly miserable lives. The whole thing about their misunderstood, I mean, these are people these are two complete narcissist that and I'm not qualified to give that diagnosis obviously you know that's just me watching too much YouTube um, but that's what they seem like and it's like they come together I, I, I mean just the martyrdom is disgusting okay Roscoe's Roscoe's trauma bonding they arrived at the temple and they both felt they should do a ceiling together they were soon seated in a ceiling room, facing each other. Elena looked so stunning as she smiled at him. She seemed calm while he felt quite nervous. Their opportunity soon came to kneel across the altar from each other. And as the sealer pronounced those sacred words, James and Elena knew that they were now sealed as husband and wife for eternity. As the earthly ceiling was taking place, a similar scene involving their spirits was happening on a higher plane. Hold on. Where they kissed and united and unified their souls. They knew they had just begun a new journey together that was eternal and never ending. I mean, this right here, I'm like, is that really what happened? I mean, they were doing this all while poor Tammy, poor Charles... I mean, I just circle back to that because at the end of the day, this nonsense is absolute nonsense, right? Okay, we get that, and it's absolute filthy disgustingness and so many issues, but at the same time, it's like, I just keep going back to that image of like, oh my God, you know what I'm saying? Like, they have spouses and children at home and they're off doing this stuff that would lead, obviously, to taking all these people's lives. It's just, it, it blows my mind. 
After the ceiling, they went to lunch together, and they felt so comfortable together. Everything felt, felt, felt so right. James could look into her eyes forever, unless he was gently kissing her and telling her how much he loved her. Even when they held hands, there was a powerful vibration that exceeded the celestial world. They attended a con the conference, but their thoughts were completely focused on each other. James gave a talk that was well received and sparked great interest in his books. Elena joined him at the selling table. Here we, we go, we're back at the selling table. And they sold more than 359 books within a couple of hours. But all they really wanted to do was slip away and express their love to each other. I, I, find, I mean, maybe he could sell those kind of books. Maybe he was that popular. I mean, 359 books. I mean, I'm like, okay, he probably made like, what, a few thousand bucks off that maybe? I don't know how much money he was making off of them. But I'm surprised at that number. I'm sure it has some kind of significance. I'm shocked he didn't say they sold 69 books, if you know what I mean. They went to dinner with some friends, but afterwards they were able to find some time alone. They drove to a secluded area and slipped into the back seat. Elena was wearing a pair of incredibly sexy jeans, and as she straddled James in the back seat, he once again grasped her fantastic bottom. She pushed him back into a reclining position. <sighs> And their loins fit perfectly together. Who says that? Oh my God, Roscoe, cover your little ear. She pushed him. No, I said that already. They kissed passionately and rhythmically pulsated against each other. Their love was intense and undeniably real. James was now madly, crazily in love with her. And it was so wonderful. No, she felt the same way about him. Please let this end soon. Please let this end soon. I'm looking at the bar. It has to be coming to an end soon. <laughs> yeah, this is so bad. One powerful moment happened earlier that day when Elena was listening to another speaker. While James stayed at the table, I feel like we skipped a section, so I'm going to just go back up for a second. But no, we didn't. Okay, we're going to continue going using the same voice. James stayed at the table, but he thought he heard Elena say, Come stand behind me. He went into the room and saw her standing against a wall. He moved behind her and they discreetly touched. After a few minutes, he checked his phone and saw she had texted him that very sentence. At the stone, he heard her voice. I don't know what that means. It was a wonderful testament that they were already communicating with each other on a higher level. How did they, I mean, because the sad thing is, is we know they really thought this way, right? We know that they thought that they had the portals and all this stuff. And I'm like, how do grown adults that have reproduced, okay, have these thoughts and legitimately think this stuff to the point that he is writing this absolute filth based around it? I cannot grasp that. They helped clean up the conference, and Elena graciously allowed James to stay in a spare bedroom at her home that night. They visited with each with the other friends until after midnight. Then they all went to bed. James anxiously hoped Elena would join him in the spare room. It took a while for everyone to settle into their beds, but once the house quieted down, James opened his door slightly and saw the wondrous sight of Elena approaching the room. They locked the door behind her and quickly got under the covers. He was wearing his athletic shorts. <laughs> I just can't. The imagery that pops, I mean, my God, y'all. Like, why is he putting this stuff in here? I guess because they're trying to also maybe make it like align with their beliefs in the church or something I don't know but I, I mean it just it, it's like because I can't help but think that this is stuff that just like tickles his taint you know what I'm saying and so that's where I'm just like you know ugh. anyways he was wearing his athletic shorts and she was wearing tight thin leggings and a loose top they clung to each other and kissed desperately hungrily James placed his hands upon her top and caressed her splendid breast. She moaned happily and wrapped her legs around his waist. Only two thin, thin layers of material separated their loins. <laughs> I just can't with this. I cannot. I cannot. 
oh my god I can't look at y'all right now I am just like <sighs> I, 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 I just uh, we just gotta we just gotta get through okay the only chance of the intimate uh, parts of it. Uh, we're not gonna say that line the intensity and speed I thought it's in spiritual violation. I was like, thank you. I feel spiritually violated at this point. Okay. The intensity and spiritual vibration exceeded anything either one of them had ever felt before. They knew their spirits were actually intimately joined together. And it felt like they had left the terrestrial world. Elena soon got on top of James and the rhythmic ecstasy continued for several more minutes. Toward the end, they both removed their tops and pressed their bodies together, skin on skin. They fit together perfectly and their kisses were deep and frenzied. Their desire for each other was beyond compare. As the reunion in the spare room came to a conclusion, Raphael knew, I guess we changed names here, Raphael knew Elena was his perfect match. They longed to stay entwined together, but it would be best to be separate and get some rest. But by 6 a.m., James couldn't stand to be away from her any longer. He slipped into her bedroom and stood at her bedside. She was unbelievably gorgeous, and he greatly desired to join her in bed and continue the previous night's activities. But there were other guests in the house who weren't yet aware of their sizzling love for each other. So he gently touched her shoulder to awaken her. Her eyes opened. Then she reached up and grabbed his arms to pull him into bed. He smiled, realizing she wasn't fully awake and had likely been dreaming of him. Okay, so we're going to pause real quick. So this, okay, so remember how Melanie Gibb was talking about the night that they were there? And again, my timeline's messed up right now. But I'm thinking, is this the time that they were talking about when Melanie was there? Y'all help me out in the comment section. When she was there and she was like, well, we had a really bad dream. And so I went over to, you know, unlock the door, but it was locked. Remember how she was like screwing around the fact that she's like, yeah, Dave and I were in the same bedroom. Oh my God. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's that part where I'm like, okay, did she know? Was she the guest that he's talking about in this? And like she knew, but she was trying to cover up for the absolute disgracefulness of this encounter. I don't know. I could be wrong. I mean, that's just me thinking out loud. Okay, let's continue. He simply whispered that he loved her and hoped she would go walking with him to the neighborhood. James and Elena had enjoyed a walk together the previous morning along the quiet streets of her gated community. Of course, he would have to say that. The, sen the sensual attraction between them had been intense, and they had, been, they had touched shoulders and held hands as they walked. They were like magnets. They couldn't be separated. She had worn exercise leggings that drove him crazy with desire. The leggings emphasized her perfectly sculpted bottom, and it took all of his willpower not to pull her to him and grasp that bottom firmly and powerfully with both of his hands while kissing her passionately. Another thing that really creeps me out while I'm reading this is the fact that you can tell what turns him on, and it's like just weird stuff that he's mixing in with religion. Clearly, leggings, this turns him on. He's a butt man. We get this athletic that maybe he's a spandex guy you know what i'm saying and he like whether he's wearing it or his chick's wearing it it's a turn on to him it's a naughty thing he likes the naughty stuff you know what i'm saying like where it's like we only had two layers on the grinding was absolutely insane i mean you can tell this like gets him going and it's so gross somebody in the <laughs> Somebody in the comment section on part one said that line. They said, hello, my dear Melanie. <laughs> I was like, I forget who you were who said it. Claim your fame, claim your fame. But literally, that's just that whole vibe of that comment. Hello, my dear, or my sweet Melanie. I can't remember what it is right now. Just goes all over me. They went walking again that next morning, but unfortunately, a friend invited herself along. But James and Elena were still completely engrossed in each other. He had to catch a flight home that morning, but he was able to give Elena a special blessing before departing. 
as he placed his hands on her head. He felt their spirits connect with a surge of power. At that moment, his only desire in life was to be with her as always, throughout eternity, and that desire has continued to intensify. During the blessing, he was shown a great mission they would perform together. He knew this was an eternal union that would forever change the world. Tears filled his eyes to be in the presence of this holy goddess. And he is nearly overcome by the spirit as he sensed her true place in the universe as a majestic arch angel. I'm an angel. <laughs> Sorry. Y'all. Okay, so blessing means something totally different. That's what I gather from this. I I can't. It says end of story. Now there's more stuff here. It's just like his notes on it. Like the detective's notes or whatever. Y'all, you know. I would give good money to see the looks on their face. They had to have passed this around the damn office. I mean, come on, y'all. This is absolutely repulsive. Impulsive. Okay. Hold on. I'm just going to, I'm reading through real quick here. So it says, in reading the story, the dates mentioned and the story in general were consistent with how Lori and Chad met and started their new relationship. And a follow-up message from Lori to Chad, she indicated that she loved their story. Uh, continuing to review records, I observed that numerous text messages between Lori and Chad in which they were fighting off evil spirits that were attaching themselves to others. I mean, my God. Chad would often score people for Lori and talk about their propensity for being influenced by intruders. The following is a sample of this rationale as observed. Um, Chad, there are only 272 threes left and none of them have occupied a body before. They are down to their last reserves. I'm glad I called Elroy. I felt he was aiming to hide out and then get into JJ. I mean, these are absolutely disgusting, sick people, y'all. Uh, and that's where the thing cuts off here. Oh my God. I just cannot, y'all. I, I am speechless. I cannot wait for this to be read in court. You know it's going to be. And it's going to be completely, like, just no emotion to a red. And I don't know how they're going to keep a straight face. This is pure filth. I mean, these people are crazy. We already knew that, but they, these people are crazy, okay? Look at this bizarre role-playing game thing that they brought to life. It's just so absurd. Anyways. Yo, I'm going to have to go take, do some damn shopping there or something. Get this, I mean, sage the house. I don't know what, okay? That's it. <laughs> we have made it through. The end of part three. Roscoe is, I mean, he's probably not going to be the same. He might take a break from the damn sofa after this one, y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed this. I enjoyed reading it to y'all. It shines a completely, not a new light, but it just gives even more insight into how absolutely, absurdly disturbed this group of people are. I mean, my God. So, anyways, that's it. We'll continue following this case and others here at the sofa. And until next time, when we keep doing that, I'll see you back here.